Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the major fund rule for governmental accounting. The concept should not be foreign to you as an accounting student because when you learn about private businesses, private companies, we'd learn about something called segment reporting. Think about a company like PepsiCo. PepsiCo own other companies or they operate other product separately than their beverage company. So their beverage company is one company. They have the Potato Lays, Tropicana, Quaker, and Gatorade. Now, as long as these companies meet certain conditions, certain rules, they will be reported separately. Their operation will be reported separately because it gives the user a better understanding of the overall position of PepsiCo. Same concept apply, applies to major funds. This rule is part of the Governmental Accounting Standard Board, GASB number 34, provide guidelines for reporting of state and local government. Under this rule, a governmental fund is considered a major fund. Now, if it's a major fund, it will need to be reported separately if it, if it meets certain criteria based on its relative size within the, the governmental financial statements. So how do we know a fund is a major fund and will need to be reported separately? We're going to look at its relative size relative to something else, relative to other funds. The purpose of this is to make sure funds that have significant impact, large enough, on the overall financial position and operation of the government to be highlighted. We want to show those separately to ensure what? Transparency, accountability in government financial reporting. If a fund is important, please report it separately. Let us see it. We want to take a look at it as stakeholders, as taxpayers, as citizens, as investors to do what? To better assess the financial health and priorities of the government because it's major Let's take a look at it. Now, how do we determine whether a fund is a major fund or not? This is what we're going to be learning in this session. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. To determine whether a fund is a major fund or not, we have the 10% and the 5% test. These tests, remember two tests, are used to determine whether a fund qualifies as a major fund and therefore require separate presentation in the financial statement. So a fund is considered a major fund if it satisfies both two, both of the following criteria what for governmental funds and expenses for full accrual are at least 10% of the corresponding total of all funds of that category, whether we are looking at governmental or enterprise. So this is test one. Test one will say, choose something, choose a criteria. Let's assume revenue. We'd look at, the, at that fund revenue. Does it represent 10% of the total revenues of the governmental fund? If the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, then it passed test one. So notice here, or, the 10% is or governmental or enterprise. It doesn't have to be combined. So if it met test one, we'll go to test two. The same element, which is revenue, that met the 10% is also at least, so it's already passed the first test, is also at least 5% of the corresponding total of all governmental and enterprise combined fund. Then we would look at the revenues and would say, okay, would the revenues of this fund represent 5% of the revenues of governmental and enterprise? If the answer is yes, then this fund is considered a major fund. Why don't we just look at some more figures and work an example to understand this? So let's make sure we understand the different funds. We have governmental funds, which are the general fund, only one fund, special revenue funds, many funds, debt service funds, capital project funds, and permanent funds. So th those are the governmental funds. Then we have the proprietary funds, which include the enterprise, which is the business funds or the enterprise 
funds and could have many funds and the internal service revenue fund. The first thing we have to determine is this. If we are looking at a governmental fund, within that governmental fund, would that fund, this particular fund, represent 10% of the total revenue of all the governmental fund? If the answer is yes, then we go to step two. In step two, we would look at the governmental fund and the enterprise fund. We don't include we don't include the internal service fund. That's not included. We don't include those. Then in the second test, we see if the revenue of that fund represent 5% of those two combined, of those two combined. So the first test is 10%. The second one is five. Now, if we're looking at the, if we're looking at, at a business fund, at an enterprise fund, first we determine if the inter, if this enterprise fund represent 10% of the total business or enterprise funds. If the answer is yes, then we would look if it represent 5% of both governmental and business. Don't worry, we'll work an example with figures. So if a fund meets both the 5, uh, the 10 and the 5%, it must be reported separately in the governmental financial statement to provide a better, a clearer understanding of its activities and financial position. It's important. That's the assumption. The best is to look at an example with numbers, with figures, to see how this all fits together. So we have the general fund. We're going to be looking at the revenues and expenses for the general fund, 100 million, 90 million. We have roads and infrastructure fund, which is a special revenue fund, revenues of 30 million, expenses of 25, education fund, also a special revenue fund, uh, 50 million and 45 million. We have a water utility fund. It's an enterprise fund. It has revenues of 40 million, expenses of 35, public safety fund, special revenue fund. 20 million and 18 million. We could have many other revenues, parts and recreation, another special revenue fund, revenues of 10 million, expenses of 9 million. So now we need to determine which funds are considered are considered major fund, which then we will have to report separately. As I told you, the, the, the general fund will definitely be reported separately regardless of its size. So, so far, one fund is for sure. What do we do next? We're going to total... Uh, revenue for governmental fund, which is a general, the roads, education, public safety, and parks. So when we add up the governmental fund, we don't use the water, uti water utility because that's an enterprise fund. So if we add up all the revenues, 100 million plus 30 million. So I'm, 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 I'm looking at revenues plus 50 plus 20 plus 10. If the math is right, equal to 210 million. Then I'm going to also add up the revenues for all funds. When I add up the revenues for all funds... It's 210, which is the governmental fund, plus 40 million of the water utility. So I'm setting up my standards. So this is basically the 10% test, and this is for the 5% test. Now I can do the same thing for expenses. If I want to use the expenses as my measure, just so you add up all the expenses for the governmental fund and the exp expenses and expenditure for the governmental and uh, utility, which is the enterprise. Now, what do I do? Well, what's the threshold here? What What is the threshold? So for the, to be reported, to pass the 10%, you have to take 210 million times 10%. What does that mean? It means your revenue has to exceed 21 million if you want to be included. Well, let's see. The roads and infrastructure fund, it includes 30 million. Would that be included? And the answer is yes, it will be included. As a 10%, it passed the 10%. The education fund, 50 million. 50 million is more than 21 million. It passed the 10% test. This is not the test here. This one, not applicable because look, it did not pass the it did not pass the 21 million. It did not pass that test and the 10 million not applicable, it does not pass. So we know so far the general fund, of course, the infrastructure and the education fund met which test? Met the met the uh, met the ten percent test. Now let's look at the five percent test. Let me change the colors to see the five percent test. So if we take two hundred and fifty million times the five percent test will give us twelve point five million. 
Well, is 30 million more than 12.5 million? Yes, the 5% test is met. So we have the general fund, roads and infrastructure is also reported. Obviously, 50 million is more than 12.5. That passed, those did not pass already the the 10 percent therefore we don't have to do them for the 20 percent therefore we are going to report the general fund the road and infrastructure fund and the education fund as major funds how about the water utility well it's only there's only one water utility well it's 40 million <laughs> Uh, um, more than 10 percent of 40 million it's 100 percent then we have to look at 40 million is 40 million so definitely the 10 percent test is it more than 12.5 it is therefore it passed the 10 percent automatically because that's the only fund and it did pass the five percent in revenue therefore water utility will be reported separately to recap, we're going to report the, the for under governmental fund. We're going to report the general fund. Of course, that's always that's always a major fund. The road and infrastructure because it passed both education fund. It passed both the public safety and parks and recreation. They don't get reported separately. They don't get reported separately. They would report it combined somewhere else. And the water utility, it's an enterprise fund. It met also the 10 and 5 percent. Before we end this session, I just want to remind you when we looked at assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses, and expenditure, we don't use the fund balances as a measurement, just FYI. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true, false, multiple choice questions. That's going to help you do better on your CPA exam or your accounting courses. Invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.